right, thank you, Carrie. Um, thanks to everyone for, for hopping on. Um, by the way, Carrie, do we know how many are on right now? Uh, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight on, but some, a couple of them have several people with them. Okay, excellent. Um, so, yeah. Um, so John, uh, John Ford and I have um, uh, a nice little presentation um, laid out for you. Topics of um, discussion for this morning will be um, dormant spray, um, early season moss control, house plant care, and how to take advantage of um, the trend in that category right now. Um, timely ideas, uh, basically just some miscellaneous items that we bring to market that may may have been forgotten and uh, just a little refresher there are some ideas of what to promote and what to pr uh, what to merchandise and then we'll we'll finish it up with um, merchandising in general some some ideas and thoughts and tips from John and I on how to properly merchandise hard goods so with that said um, I'll just hop into this now as I go through these slides you're going to see a number of um, slides that are handouts or literature, and these are all available um, uh, to the NNBA. Just email me, text me, call me, and I'll be happy to send you the PDF file um, or the file in general that you can print, uh, hopefully from your place of business. Um, some of these are header signs and um, we can work individually of, of getting those signs to you. So just keep that in mind as I go through the presentation. Um, so first uh, topic of conversation is dormant spray. We're, we're right in the, the heat of that season as I say it. Um, and um, we, we bring a couple all natural products to the market. Um, just for that, the dormant spray season. And um, it doesn't have to be just fruit trees. I know bare root fruit trees are, are set to land at your place of business. Um, you'll be selling bare root fruit trees, but you'll also be selling a lot of ornamentals in general. And um, so these products are great tie-in sales. They're great um, uh, products to be placing on NCAP near the register and um, offering to the consumers, those early gardeners as we, as we roll in through winter. Um, so now this slide you see here is a header sign and it is available in a PDF file. Um, and um, we can also print it in a little bit larger format if you wish to make an NCAP out of it. So just reach out to me should you uh, want one of these. So I'll turn it over to John here. He's going to go through the specific products that we uh, bring to market for um, dormant sprays. Thanks, Tom. Uh, first product here that we're uh, addressing is copper fungicide in a dry form. Um, this is a wettable powder. It is uh, sulfur and copper. Uh, it's what we formerly um, sold as Bordeaux. Bordeaux itself is uh, is a product that is in my state is not available. I live in California, so we don't have access to this. Uh, copper fungicides, um, what they do is they, they uh, are sprayed during the season. The most optimum time is the last spray as the plants leaf out. These are contact fungicides. They wash off every time that it rains. So for control of peach slave curl, if you sprayed in February and it rained five times, it's not there anymore. So I would highly recommend that you wait until the plant begins to leaf out and make an application then. It's not necessarily called out on the label, but you can understand the principle, hopefully, of the product washing off if it rains and that's clearly called out on the label. Uh, this is a particularly effective product because it contains copper and sulfur together. Sulfur. Um, reduces the pH. This is a very uh, acid-based um, uh, product when you apply it, so don't um, add any vinegars or anything to it. It's pretty acidic the way that it is, and it can be used as a dust form on some of your grapes and is also recommended there um, as well, so it's a pretty cool product. This is the liquid version of what we call copper octanoate or copper fungicide. 
um, we have, as I understand it, the only RTU um, natural based product um, in the marketplace. Um, the competitors are uh, uh, ammoniacal driven or uh, ammonic coppers. Um, this is copper octanoate, very small product, soap based. Um, you spray this throughout the entire season. And the cool thing about this particular product, no sulfur, less chances of the product burning. Um, uh, uh, an application on your lighter colored apples, you may develop some spotting in season if you apply it to, uh, forgive me, a, a, a Granny Smith or some of the lighter uh, blended apples. Uh, you could get a little copper spot if you're trying to control disease in season. Uh, it is labeled for indoor and outdoor use, which is pretty cool. Everywhere from um, in-season applications to dormant applications. Two real mixing rates here, an ounce for everything in season and two ounces for uh, dormant applications. Um, and that is somewhat confusing on the label, but it's all there. You may have to go from front to back to, to understand what I'm talking about there. Good product labeled for organic gardening. I'd like to point out, um, and this was communicated back um, in the fall of uh, 2020, um, but just want to point out that um, do keep in mind that the copper, along with 18 other of our naturally based SKUs, we've created a Captain Jack's um, family of, of brands. So as you can see here, this is our new label. Um, new color coating in the caps and the nozzles. So and just a reminder, we do have a family of Captain Jack's products now. Good point. All seasons oil, uh, for the most part in areas where there is freeze, you don't wanna use this in season. So this could be used uh, when the plants are dormant and the product is not gonna freeze into the wood. So it's more temperature driven. Um, it's a paraffinic oil, so it evaporates. In a sense, if you spray, use an RTU, and it says you can spray and eat in the same day, virt uh, virtually the product evaporates away. That's how the natural claim really comes out on a paraffinic oil or an oil-based product. It's simply not there anymore. If you apply it at heavier rates in season as a dormant spray, um, uh, then you may get a slight oil sheen uh, can be used for cleaning plants, uh, interestingly enough, that's called out. So for sooty mold or molds, you will see that. Um, for your prunus, prunes, plums, and so on, uh, that is delayed dormant stage. You don't spray any other stage of those, so pay attention to the label there. Um, the two to four tablespoons that Tom has on the presentation here, um, that will vary depending on plant. So again, you need to uh, pay attention to the label. Uh, the RTS, as I understand it, is a two and a half tablespoon delivery system. So that's what you're getting, if you're wondering. Really not designed to be refilled. And the uh, product should be used. Um, that's one that I keep in my garage to use all year round. Uh, you gotta be honest with you. Kill bugs, evaporates away. Kill bugs, evaporates away. Edibles, ornamentals, it's just a great product. Go ahead, Tom. Okay. So, you know, as you can see, the, the dormant season offering, the product of offering is, is pretty simple. It's, it's some form of copper fungicide and a horticultural oil. So, um, you know, as you, as you all start to clean and polish the floors and reset the hard goods and you're thinking of, okay, what, what can I promote in the month of January? Um, dormant spray uh, is, is a good one. And um, don't forget your add-on sales. And for us, you know, it's as simple as our, our new auto mix sprayer, um, which by the way is completely redesigned, retooled, um, and it, it is shipping. In fact, it was sh shipping um, mid last year. Um, and then our measuring cup. So those two products should be merchandised right in there with your dormant sprays. Um, and I've got an uh, a suggested end cap layout here I'll show you in a minute but a little more on this auto mix sprayer um, when you remove the the jar from the applicator itself here's a picture of the underside so this threaded area right here will fit 
our pint and cork concentrates. So um, be thinking as we move into spring, you know, we're, we're all hearing that there is a global shortage of components, um, bottles, RTU heads. So as we move into spring, don't get frustrated if you find yourself not being able to source ready to use products. You can turn any of our concentrates into a ready to spray with that auto mix sprayer. And here's, here's a quick suggested end cap um, that I put together. Here's that, that header sign that I talked about that is available, um, but spend a little time looking at this. So just, you know, keep it simple. Don't overthink it. Two to three products max. Um, try to visually send the message. Our, our consumers today um, are not very patient. They wanna come in, um, they want to visually try to figure out what exactly they need for the problem that they have. Um, most of them are shy, they don't ask questions. So try to visually send the message. Um, lots of signage, uh, maybe some informational handouts, and I've got a few to show you here in a little bit. Make sure everything is priced. Um, going back to my retail days, one of the first thing I learned from my manager is don't just price that, that front facing. Make sure that entire case is priced before you put it on the shelf. And then the end caps should only stay up three to four weeks. Rotate it, move on to the next. It's the next season. Maybe it's rose care, maybe it's um, houseplant care, but keep it fresh, keep it rotated. Okay, John. Uh, I would like to address the uh, the dormant mixing or not mixing because Tom is going to make available to you two different PDFs that you can print at the store. And one of them, the header card sign there, actually recommends that you mix them together. Quite frankly, folks, um, I'm a fan of doing it apart because one suffocates bugs and one controls disease. Um, the industry tells you to apply it three times a year and to play along, I guess, or to participate in that. Um, you can mix our products. You put them together and you follow the label instructions about how much copper goes in a gallon, how much oil goes in a gallon and mix accordingly. We're not telling you to put both products in there and turn your dial to two and a half. And you can spray them separately as well. So moving on here, we have our orchard spray. I gotta believe this is one of the most beautiful labels that there is in the marketplace. You can see the Captain Jack's branding. Orchard spray can be used up to the day of harvest. This is one of those products that dissipates very quickly. It's one I'll call a clean pie. That pyrethrin has nothing to protect it from the environment that breaks it down. So when you're spraying a, a pie salt, you get the benefit of insect control and disease control all at the same time. And a very handsome label can be used indoors and out, fully labeled for house plants, fully labeled for around the house, your lawns, um, incredible uh, uh, um, fruit tree listing uh, from the dormant type trees to trees that are evergreen and produce fruit and all the ornamentals as well. The twist and shoot applicator is up to 25 feet depending on hose pressure and it's adjustable. So you can get a stream or a, a, a uh, angled fan uh, it's a great, great product. If you're, uh, should be considered um, in our RTS quart or quart concentrate. We also have it in a pint concentrate as well. And I'd like to add um, one final point. I, I added this slide um, knowing that it, it's probably a little bit early or it could be a little bit early to be, to be promoting it. But if you kind of stop yourself and think about it, um, we all we all find ourselves working the hard good aisle and we have that customer that has fruit trees and and they're just they're frustrated they're confused because they don't know really what they should be using and when they should use it and, and I like to go to this product for that customer because it just it simplifies the fruit tree spray alternatives or, or that process, meaning orchard spray could be the consumer's year-round fruit tree spray, period. Dormant, in season, 
up-to-date harvest, and as John stated, has literally every fruit tree or every edible on the label. So um, consider this if you don't have it already. Think about what I just said, um, and I think you'll find at the end of this year, you'll find this to be one of your top sellers. Um, another handout that um, this actually uh, was created by John Ford a number of years ago, and it's it's become um, used widely within our company in all states, and it is a two-sided, um, we can get this laminated for you, dormant spray timing suggestion guide. So it is just chock full of some really, really good information, front and back. It's got some nice images, so it gives you that visual. And just step by step, what do I spray? When do I spray? And what do I spray it on? So again, this is available in a PDF. Um, and in certain situations, I can get these laminated and, and um, delivered to your doorsteps. And this, again, is, is that informational piece, that handout, to make sure you've got plenty of copies either in your info center, in your place of business, or have some on that dormant spray end cap that customers can grab and take home with them. It's a great tear sheet. Tom, could you go back a page, please? Yep. One more? Back, back a page to the first, yeah. Go ahead, another one. This is where I actually, in the upper right-hand corner, tell you not to mix. So uh, I just want everybody to be aware that you can mix or you don't have to mix your oils and your coppers together. Don't confuse it because the label on the concentrates actually does not call out mixing the product. Um, so in this particular case, this uh, piece of POP tells not to mix them together. And again, I'm a fan of not doing that only because one does one thing and one does another and they really don't need to be together to accomplish their, their goals. Go ahead, Tom. Thank you. Okay. Okay, John, you want to talk a little bit about our moss control offerings? Then click the page there and we can. Um, another product that unfortunately not available to me in California, but we may not need it. This is an iron-based uh, product that, that controls moss on contact. Uh, it also has the ability to turn your lawn green, um, has uh, plenty. We are competitive in the marketplace. It allows you to move away from the name brand. We're privileged to have our products in the NMBA stores. Um, highly considerate uh, of, of all of you to, uh, to buy into our product mix here. Uh, five. Uh, what is that, a four pound uh, yeah. shaker, Tom, and a 5M bag, and they're both available through distribution, or Tom can arrange it to pick it up directly from uh, the plant there in Oregon, I believe, correct? Uh, Monroe, Monroe, Washington, yeah. Monroe, Washington, yeah. yeah. So it's never, it's never too early to start promoting moss products, you know, here in the Northwest. Um, um, you know, it's, it's um, we joke, uh, it's a couple guarantees in life, you know, and one of them, one of them's taxes. The other one is we grow moss and it grows everywhere. And with Funny. this wet winter we're having, there is moss everywhere. So a um, couple sizes here. This is ferrous sulfate. It'll turn that moss in the lawn, in the flower bed, flower bed black literally an hour. So has had a Forgive us. Okay. And so then to move to our um, ready to spray Moss Max, this is the, um, this is the natural version. <clears throat> this product can be applied literally on any surface, um, lawns, flower beds, and, and your hard, uh, hardscapes, um, the side of your home, the side of your boat, your roof. So this is um, potassium soap. Um, I will warn you to warn your customer, it, it does um, work a, a little bit slow. So just ask the customer to apply per the instructions and then just be patient. It will show signs of discoloring and killing of the moss and algae, but it, it will work slower than the prior slide. Um, so this is your natural choice. And then one that I think we all forget 
is our liquid iron or um, a chelated iron. So this is primarily sold as a um, nutrient for, for evergreens for a quick green up. But something we forget is liquid iron will turn moss on ornamentals, um, deciduous or evergreen, it'll turn it black quickly. So a couple, a couple things to think about here. We sell a lot of azaleas and we sell a lot of expert azaleas and both of those plants grow that silver lichen. Liquid iron is your fix, okay? We also have a lot of moss on trees, especially fruit trees. Liquid iron is your fix. So don't forget this one to promote other than just as a nutrient during the growing season. Remember too, with your iron-based products, if, if you do have a, uh, an iron deficiency, um, it adjusts it usually in the foliage that grows new. It, it chelated can help change some of that coloration on the, the leaves that show the uh, iron deficiency, but in most cases, you don't see the benefit until it grows out. Go ahead, Tom. All right, John, hop in here. Um, we'll stop. Um, great product. Uh, we use this in the California market in the summertime to uh, stop the uh, degra degradation of the leaves on some of our uh, ornamental maples, the dwarf maples. So if you spray this at the height of um, leaf production, which is usually June and no later, um, your maples hold onto their foliage and they stay cleaner longer. Some of your deciduous magnolias too. Great, great product. Um, if you're planting in the winter time and you apply this to the foliage and the plant hasn't had a chance to grow enough roots to get established, this will help the plant not lose moisture. Uh, this is kind of a sleeper. Um, I think uh, if we spent more time promoting it, we would actually see uh, the benefits on the consumer level to come back and, and use the product. You know what? That actually saved my plants. And uh, that's what it's designed to do. It's a uh, it's de derived from uh, pine oils, kind of smells, has a, a fragrance of a, um, what would you describe it as, Tom? It, 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 uh, it smells chemical, but it's not. It's just an essential pine oil. Well, it takes, it takes me back to my baseball days because it smells like pine tar. So, there you um, go. yeah. So, uh, jo you know, John, John nailed it. This is a sleeper. And we, we typically, traditionally, buy this, bring it in, merchandise it for the holiday season, right? Because when we're selling cut greens, we get a case of this by the register or we display it by the cut greens and we promote it. But you all have become very savvy in your social media advertising, I've noticed. So here's my tip here on wilt stuff. As we move through winter and you, you all watch the weather forecast closely, if we get an Arctic front that's drifting down and, and it's going to hit the Pacific Northwest, here's an item you can just drop into your social media announcements and help drive some traffic into your store and pick up some, some incremental sales. Great, great point, Tom. As a matter of fact, I've created some that I'll share with Tom that we can promote in winter and summer. Cold blasts, heat blasts, the whole bit. Yeah. Okay, and um, house plants in general, the house plant category is absolutely booming. I, I watch many of your Facebooks on a daily basis and it, it literally seems like every week everyone's getting a new truckload of foliage or house plants. So John and I put these slides in as just a reminder, don't forget our house plant care lineup. It starts with these four foods. They're all in eight ounce bottles. They're in the little flip top caps and it literally takes one drop per quart of water and they're all nicely um, labeled for specific plants. So um, we have these four to offer in the way of feeding and then we have these four in the way of insect or houseplant care in general. Can I add something to that one, Tom? The Leaf Fire. Shine, the uh, Leaf Shine product is Wilt Stop. I know I'm not supposed to tell you that, but that's Wilt Stop. So if you spray that on the house plant and you leave the house for a couple of days, that actually stops the plant from transpiring moisture. 
and helps it from not being not wilting. It's kind of like a uh, a uh, vacation care product for your house plants. Good tip. It's also available in a um, pop-up display. This takes about a two foot square retail space. It will con consist of a half a case of each of the eight items, including the Bontone uh, rooting powder. Um, just ask your distributor rep for our part number 20069. Comes with a header sign and again takes up a small retail footprint. Now, our house plant care items um, have been in extremely high demand. Um, we did uh, hit a period where we were just simply out of product, but we have ramped that back up. Um, it's been in production and we will be filling our distributor partner warehouses very, very soon. So just keep, um, keep ordering that product. Um, it is on its way. <clears throat> in addition to those eight, um, a very, um, very popular um, additional item is our 32 ounce insecticidal super soap. Uh, what makes this super is it also contains spinosad along with the potassium salts of fatty acids. Uh, this is an incredible label. If you'll look closely, all of the common insects, aphids, mites, white fly, are right there on the front of the label. This is literally the only insecticide that we bring to market that states and is approved for greenhouse use. So indoor, outdoors, and greenhouse, and approved for organic gardening. John, you wanna hop in here? Um, sure, houseplant uh, insect control. Uh, when you open it up, you see a little gray carrier. That's what you're actually seeing. We're putting uh, imidacloprid on a carrier. Uh, you sprinkle that into the top of the pot and water it in. The benefits are more than the bugs that are on the plant. Uh, one of the biggest selling points is fungus gnats. Um, it uh, penetrates the soil, the loose soil mix, and allows you to uh, get the larva uh, before they hatch and turn into that, uh, that gnat that seems to drive us all nuts. Uh, very low order odor. Um, some of our houseplant uh, purchases now are succulents. I would highly recommend this to be the, the, the pesticide of choice for succulents because it's not applied to foliage. There are no labels out there to kill bugs on succulents and sometimes we risk burning the plants or if you're like me, you have burned the plants trying to use topicals, even soaps. So here's an opportunity to sell a product to control insects on succulents, which is, which is a big selling point. Um, I'm a big palm fanatic, um, a member of the International Palm Society. And when you use this product um, over and over again to control scale, for example, uh, remove some of it or turn it into the soil because the fine particulate that the carrier is sometimes retains too much moisture in the pot. So you wanna break up the little masses of gray over a period of time or just scoop some out and reapply it and that's just from somebody who uses this product a lot. This is a great product. It is a great product. And, and I, I sell this as this is the lazy man's way of insect houseplant care. And it's got a simple mixing rate. It's one tablespoon of this per gallon size of pot, one application, eight weeks. So you guys do the math. Um, nice little ring at the register, easy to use and long residual action. Okay, so um, that is our um, lineup of, of suggested items to be promoting merchandising now. Um, and I'd like to spend a little bit of time just talking about um, merchandising hard goods in general. Um, as I stated earlier, um, I've been seeing on your Facebook posts that you know, you're cleaning the store, you're polishing the floor, you're getting ready for the spring rush. I would think that also includes resetting the hard goods. So some, some ideas or some thoughts to consider as you do that. Um, and, and John and I 
we aren't saying with this picture, it needs to be a bonide set. I, I get it, but you should try to limit it to two to three brands, period. Um, typically try to lead with your herbicides or your weed killers. Um, and in some, in some businesses, the herbicide selection might be minimal. So I would say lead with your most popular category. Um, create subcategories, meaning create a herbicide section, create an insect section, create a fungicide, so on and so on. Try to merchandise it so it simplifies the choices for the consumer. Again, remember, they're impatient. They want to come in and figure out the solution themselves. And if you can create those subcategories, it'll simplify that process. Um, proper signage, bin labels, uh, meaning small little stickers that don't necessarily get placed on that nose of the shelf, but maybe just on the top side where that first bottle sits. And the importance of that is when your hard goods restocker goes to fill that empty slot, they will know what that item was missing. Okay, there's no guessing um, and it, it helps um, solve the problem of you get this hard goods area set the first of spring, as you start to sell through it, it doesn't get out of configuration. You know what was in that empty slot. Price points top to bottom. So try to, try to get your lower price points or your smaller sizes on that top shelf and work to the higher price points going down or the larger sizes. End caps for timely promotions. One, one of the biggest mistakes I see in the retail store is the lack of promotional space. So try to create or leave room for end cap space or off shelf to, uh, a space. Um, don't forget to cross merchandise tie-in sales. Things like the sprayers that we talked about earlier. Another good one that is often forgotten is our turbo sticker or a spreader sticker. Get that cross merchandise with your herbicides, some of your insecticides. It's just a nice tie-in sale. Assign an expert. That may be your hard goods manager, um, your hard goods buyer. It could be someone that just works the retail floor, but try to assign one person to be that expert um, as the go-to go person. And then my last tip would be natural slash organic alternatives. Get those merchandise next to the like synthetic. Um, there seems to be um, two thoughts out in the marketplace. One, uh, create a natural slash organic set or merchandise that natural slash organic alternative next to the synthetic. I like, I like the thought of um, placing that natural control alternative next to the synthetic. John, you wanna add anything here? Well, I think that's important because uh, to, to do it the opposite way, to separate them, you're making the ass assessment that they're all gonna shop naturals or where are your synthetics or how do I know the difference? I think what Tom's trying to address is, is that we have a natural um, non-selective weed killer called burnout, and we have a, a, a synthetic non-selective weed killer called cleanup HE, or which is new this year, or cleanup, and let the customers decide. They're side by side. They'll be categorized. Tom can help you do that. Um, and uh, the customer can make the decision and in a couple of slides here moving forward, we're gonna show you how to determine the difference between the two, which um, is quite helpful. We're the only company that does this. Go ahead, Tom. Okay, so as we move here towards the end of our presentation, um, um, some quick review, um, you know, the front of the Bonide label, um, there is some very important color coding um, and, it, and it tells a story. So most of you know this, um, I do understand there's some, some new staff to most of your businesses, so it'd be a good time to explain it. Also refresh 
your current um, employees um, because there, there, there is a story to be told here. So as you can see, the green label, that is our weed control. The red label, insect control. The orange label, disease control, so on and so on. And I think the most important color coding is here at the bottom. So the upper right corner of each of our labels, you're, you're going to see either a tan shoulder or a purple shoulder. And there is such a demand right now for natural slash organic products. Just remember, tan means natural, purple means synthetic. The only company that does that. <laughs> yep. And then the last handful of slides, we're, we're gonna, John and I are gonna kind of just buzz through these. Um, as Carrie stated, um, as we began, this will be posted. Um, but these last few slides would be good to print out individually um, and share with not only your staff, but also have handy to share with customers because it's good, important information. So, John, if you can just kind of hit on the, the bullet point as we finish up this presentation. Uh, natural insecticides can be chemical, mineral, or biological. Quite frankly, folks, the, the call out of natural or organic, what is really organic and is organic safe? Um, we, our products are labeled either by Garden Naturals or the tan banding or the swoosh or the four organic gardening you see in the lower right hand corner, the little three tea leaves that can come in an assortment of colors. Um, the four organic gardening is the National Organics Program. That's the EPA. That's the USDA signification on our natural based products. Um, naturals don't necessarily call out the fact that they are safe. Uh, an example of that is, is that you don't want copper in your eyes or you don't want diatomaceous earth. You don't want to breathe in diatomaceous earth. So uh, natural in itself does not signify that a product is safe. Um, we drive more natural based products than any other company does in the country. It's about 46% of the sales that we do nationally with all of the independent garden centers across the country. Um, and uh, we're fully prepared to do an entire lineup of natural based products. Um, and the uh, call out for organic, um, we're not gonna, for say it's for organic gardening, the product itself is not organic. Tom? Yeah, and then um, this slide, you know, just kind of defines some common vocabulary as we, as we move into spring and we sell more and more pesticides. So again, a, a good slide to, to print out individually and, and discuss with your staff, especially those that are working that hard goods aisle. Um, this one as well, um, you know, how insecticides work, talks about the different modes of action I think that's super important for that so-called um, uh, hard goods expert that you've, you've chosen within your business. And then let that person share um, the information with other staffers that may cross over between hard goods and, and other departments. And then just some simple you know, tips that you know, not only me, but, you know, John has learned over our good grief, 35 plus years of being in this industry. Some of it is just, you know, common knowledge, but it's also good to, to read through these as a refresher and, and remind, especially your, your new employees as we move into spring. And from that, um, we will just open it up to questions or comments and um, try to help you the best we can. Okay, well, there is one question here um, for Tom or John. Um, the question is, is how effective is the mite spray for houseplants and how long does it take for the systemic houseplant insect control to work? Okay, John, you wanna tackle that? Sounds like two different products. Yeah. Well, the, the Mite X is a blend of friendly oils, um, so it'll suffocate the insect. Um, it will repel the insect as long as you can smell it. So the rosemary oil, some of the other essence oils that are in the product will help keep the insect away. 
understand too with spider mites the generations about every 14 days so they should always treat new foliage uh, they should also be aware of um, making sure the plant is watered before you apply uh, an oil-based pesticide to a house plant for mite control and then tom if you want to address the other one yeah so the other one if i remember was this one the systemic house plant insect control so Again, um, active ingredient is imidacloprid. Um, that has been tested to move within a plant, indoors or out, extremely fast. Um, so as I guess general rule of thumb, um, John, we could say uh, a, a plant that's two feet tall, after application, um, 14 to 21 days, it would reach the top. Would that be accurate, John? In the higher concentration outdoor products with a midicolpert, it's a foot a day. So this is a 0.22% active ingredient. I think that's a fair assessment, Tom. Yeah. Do. Okay. So yeah. relatively fast. So uh, any other questions anyone else has? You can either type in the chat or you can unmute yourself if you like. I don't see. Well, it was it was a great Tom John great presentation. You know your Thank first you. your for your first PK uh, presentation, and I think you've set the bar high here for everyone else. So uh, very educational. I, I actually enjoyed it well as as well. Um, I have a thank you. Lots of information. Great. So again, this will be uh, recorded. It was recorded, and it will be uh, put up on the NMBA YouTube page, so you can uh, show future employees or employees who couldn't attend.